Let's begin. It gives me uh, immense pleasure this morning to introduce myself. Um, my name is Philip Alston. I'm the UN Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Summary or Arbitrary Executions. Uh, I'm going to uh, speak for a few minutes uh, in relation to the press statement that has just been released, uh, perhaps not in this room as yet, but uh, should be available on the web by now. Um, the, and then I'll be happy to take any questions that uh, arise. The background uh, is well known, I think, to most of you. Uh, there was a videotape that was broadcast by Channel 4 in the United Kingdom uh, in late August, which appeared to show uh, the cold-blooded execution of a number of Tamils who had been stripped naked, bound, and blindfolded, and then shot in the head by semi-automatic weapons. Uh, that tape then became a subject of international controversy. The UN Secretary General, uh, various uh, key diplomatic representatives, called upon the Sri Lankan government to consider the issue. The government initially simply proclaimed that the videotape was obviously a fake. Uh, they pointed to earlier examples of propaganda efforts undertaken by the LTTE, and they dismissed it uh, insisting that they would undertake no further analysis uh, unless convincing evidence was shown to them which would require further attention. Subsequently, they did in fact commission four experts to review the tape. Those four experts, all Sri Lankans, produced reports which were never made available in their entirety, but which were reported by the government at a major press conference and briefing for the diplomatic community in Colombo. All four of the opinions concluded without any qualification that the tape was a fake. I subsequently issued a statement saying that I was not able to conclude that those investigations had been independent or impartial. Uh, two of the experts were members of the Sri Lankan Armed Forces, the very group which was under scrutiny if the videotape was to be accurate. Uh, and the reports in general struck me as rather impressionistic rather than scientific in their approach. The government of Sri Lanka then informed the UN Human Rights Council that it would take no further action on the videotape. They proclaimed widely that it was a fake. They called upon me to both withdraw the allegation and to make an apology. In addition, Senior government officials were highly critical of me for having failed to undertake my own analysis of the videotape's authenticity. When it became apparent that no further action was going to be taken either by the government or by other actors, I therefore decided to commission a number of expert opinions. I spoke widely. Uh, two individuals within the broadly defined forensic community in this country, and I identified three individuals whose expertise is described in the background materials. They clearly are very highly qualified. I had never met any of them before. Uh, none of them has ever been to Sri Lanka or had anything to do with 
the conflict in Sri Lanka. Uh, their expertise is unquestioned, so too, in my view, is their independence and impartiality. The three experts, one, Dr. Daniel Spitz, is a very prominent forensic pathologist. Second, Mr. Peter Diachuk, is an expert in firearms evidence, runs the forensics program, uh, one of the most important um, in this country at the John Jay Criminal Institute here in New York. Uh, and the third, Mr. Jeff Spivak, an expert in forensic video analysis. Each of these experts subjected the videotape to a very careful and thorough examination, and each of them concluded that there was nothing to indicate that the video was a fake. My own interpretation of their conclusions is that they point very clearly to the authenticity of the video. In addition, the various points raised by the Sri Lankan experts are, for the most part, systematically rebutted by these independent experts. The result of this analysis, then, would seem to point to the need for the government of Sri Lanka to undertake the investigation that I had called for initially. Before I draw my final conclusion and then open the conference for questions, I want to add uh, in full and comprehensive disclosure that there were several items which the experts were not able to resolve based on the absence of the necessary evidence. In other words, the tape itself did not enable a conclusion to be reached definitively. They are noted in my statement, but the most important of them by far is the fact that the date encoded in the video is that of 17 July 2009. Now, as we know, the conflict concluded in May of 2009. And so if that date were definitive, this would be a problem. Not that the videotape would have been staged, because every indication is that the killings were genuine, were undertaken in the way depicted. But it would certainly indicate that the video was not taken during the final phases of the conflict as alleged by those who released the tape. The experts simply responded to that by noting that one fixes the date on a mobile phone, which is the device on which this was almost certainly taken, oneself. And the Philips video, the Philips phone on which this was taken, uh, as the analysis demonstrates, um, provides for whoever is using the phone to set the date. There is no reason why the date was necessarily uh, going to be correct, and there are reasons why the individual taking it may have wanted to change the date so that the video could not be tracked back. Now, this is pure speculation on my part, but we would have to assume that the video was taken by a soldier, one of, the, one of those who was a colleague of the other uh, Sri Lankan soldiers who appear on the video, and that individual would presumably not want to be able to be identified, which would follow from having a precise date show up on the videotape. So there is a reason why the date might have been altered. But as I said, the conclusion clearly is that the videotape is authentic. I have therefore 
called upon the government of Sri Lanka um, to respond to these allegations and the conclusion that I've reached is the following. In light of the persistent flow of other allegations of extrajudicial executions committed by both sides during the closing phases of the war against the LTTE, I call for an independent inquiry to be established to carry out an impartial investigation into war crimes and other grave violations of international humanitarian and human rights law allegedly committed in Sri Lanka. Uh, copies of the dossier are available at the back of the room and I'll now take any questions.